Right, I really am the worst for trying to get these tutorials short. Right, this is tutorial five, and we're going to be using Buffer Reader to um, take input from the user to handle uh, different commands. Right, for this we're going to be using the imports Java IO Buffer Reader, Buffered Reader, Java IO In Stream Reader, and Java IO Exception. Right, so let's import those. Import. Just pause it. Right, so there are three imports. Um, someone might tell you to do this import java.io.asterisk means all and that will import everything from the IO library but as you can see we're only using three things so there's no point importing everything unless you really want to be lazy and save yourself three lines of code and make your program laggy but I'm no import whore and I'll just import what I need Right, so there are three imports. Now we're going to need to create a new buffered reader and um, read the line. Right, so let's quickly do that. Right, so what we have here is, is a new buffer reader. Or we're defining um, in-stream as a buffer reader, which is a new buffer reader which takes the input input stream from the sisters uh, sisters systems input. Right, then what we need to do is say in str dot read line capital L and we compile that and now we get our IO exception and that's why we imported this so we can throw IO exceptions but you can only type in one line and to resolve that issue we're going to create a while loop while right so we've got while take input and we'll define that down here if you notice, I'm pausing the video a lot now to try and save a uh, video next time. Right, so take input. Right, so while we'll take input equals true, so we're going to make that true. Right, so now we're going to collect this, and now we want to apply that to a string. And we're just going to go over here and say string, string input. Actually, string str input equals in stream dot read line. So it will read that line that we just entered and get the string value of it pretty much. Right, so now we're going to say if in, uh, string input equals we'll just do one command for this uh, exit then take input equals false which will result in, result in the program being closed. So let's compile that non-static problems, right. So we're going to need to move all this over into a constructor, like we've done in our previous tutorials. Or we could just make this variable here static, but I prefer to just put it in a constructor rather than making everything static. It's just not the best way to do things, right? So s main, just want to emphasize how important it is to have your code lined up properly because it makes it so much easier to read. I'm going to quickly change this and then show you it to show you how much easier it is to read the, the code when it's laid out like this. Right, this is how your typical idiot will program. There's a guy I know, um, Steve, who runs a private server of RuneScape uh, called Deltascape and most of his code will come out like this. It's absolutely disgusting. I don't see why he can't just indent his code. Really baffles me. That's why it's good to indent your code, because it just makes it so much easier to read. Right, so let's check this out. What have we got? A few problems. Right, of course. Um, S main is a method, not a variable. Right, so not only do we have to throw IO exceptions for main, because it's passing um, to its constructor, S main, we're going to have to throw the exceptions for that as well. And we should end with no errors. And we should be able to now type in multiple lines until we type exit, which will exit out. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Cutting it quick, so save upload time.